This week on Entertaining People, it's all my favorite foods. We are entertaining for one. Me, it's a party for one. Ribeye steak, spinach, all the great stuff. Come right back. I'm Porter William and this is Entertaining People. Welcome back to another episode today. This is so simple. This is a party for one. There's nothing better than a party for one and I know you all do it. Don't tell me you don't. Whether it was that great character Bridget Jones in London and she'd come home and eat all the ice cream out of the carton and drink a couple glasses of wine or the guy dancing in his boxers over the over the uh, sofa playing the broom. That's really what a party for one is. You can tell I didn't dress up. I'm in my favorite sweats, my favorite sweater. In fact, it's got a burn from where my buddy and I, Rod, were shooting off fireworks in Mexico for New Year's. Party for one is just that. Keep it simple and I always say, from a memory you can make a memory. So just cook what you love to eat and I love that ribeye. Well for me, my party for one is a really simple menu. It's a ribeye steak, some spinach. I'm gonna teach you a little trick, it's called the liaison. It's just butter noodles and in fact, I've got some uh, water boiling over on the stove and we can get started by just getting these noodles in. One of the tricks of the liaison is to mix some butter with the water, the pasta water, actually when it's finished. I just put a whole package in. The reason why is that I'm gonna have some leftovers for my party for one. I'm gonna bring up the heat and just boil these noodles. Just let them sit here. It's well salted water and probably about uh, 10 or 15 minutes just because they're wide egg noodles. Um, those are gonna be all ready. Now, from my, um, oh look, I got my music here as well. So I'm gonna be all set later when I sit down to eat with all my favorite tunes. You can do the same thing. Next up is actually from a memory. This is from a great restaurant in New York. It's called the Viceroy, and they make a corn fritter. I used to have fritters as kids, but they really nailed it. All it is is just a little bit of the petite sweet corn that's frozen, and then a small can of cream corn. You can find this anywhere. This is basic eating. We're not doing anything gourmet tonight, but we are putting together super flavors that uh, probably are only important to me. If you like some of them, I encourage you to do it at home. And we're gonna add a little bit of milk. A fritter is basically a pancake, but we want it nice and thick, and it's gonna be the stage to these great seared scallops. And I'm also gonna put just a little bit of baking powder in. Just probably just a, just a scant touch. One of my favorite tricks, the back of the spoon. That should do one, two. That should do it. And then we're gonna need some flour as our binding material. You can also use a pre-made pancake mix, typically. Put that in. And we are just going to whisk all of that together really quickly. You wanna use a wide blade whisk with corn, otherwise those kernels are gonna get all caught up. And you definitely want a pancakey, kind of runny doughy consistency. And what I'm looking at right there tells me I need just a little bit more flour. Probably two more. And also we're gonna get a pinch of salt in there and white pepper is really dynamite on this. Okay, that's exactly what we are looking for. Couldn't be any easier than that. We've got our corn mixture ready. I'm gonna bring it over here and I have my olive oil already smoking. Just grab yourself a ladle and very simply ladle that right into that hot oil. Perfect. It's kind of a low fry. That's what I call something in between a deep fry and a saute. We're gonna let it sit here until those edges are nice and golden brown. Oh, I can already smell the, the corn coming through it. We're just gonna have a perfect little pancake. Keep our heat on there. Stay clear of any spatters and you grab yourself a spatula. This is just gonna take a minute to cook. I love this. I actually had gotten in the cab a few years ago in New York. I was working and uh, told the driver, take me to a dynamite restaurant that's under 20 bucks. And he brought me to the Viceroy. I think it's on 8th Avenue if I'm not mistaken. And they had this appetizer. I always love sear scallops, but what they did here is they made this amazing tower. And I've been doing it ever since. That's gonna need to sit untouched just for a couple minutes. We can stir our pasta while we're over here. And I'm gonna reduce that heat just until that gets a little bit more done. Now we're gonna sear some scallops in the same skillet once we take that out. And what I love to do 
is ask my fishmonger for the best things he's got going. Frozen scallops today are much less expensive and they're available. These are fresh, but I just want to show you how beautiful these big daddies are. That's a wonderful sea scallop. And for me, looks like he's given me some extras. I'm probably going to do three scallops. Uh, well, what the heck? Let's do four. I love scallops. I remember being a kid in Balboa Island uh, in Newport Beach and there was this restaurant called Walt's Wharf and they would skewer up the salads and broil them. Oh, it tasted wonderful. We're just gonna drizzle these with a little bit of olive oil before they go in the pan. I can hear our fritter over there. And a little bit of gray salt on the stove and just a little bit of black pepper. That's all it takes for a sear. Let's see how the fritter's doing over here. Okay, a little bit more time on that. Now you can see those edges coming together. And what we're really looking for are some bubbles right in the middle. There they are, do you see those coming through? That'll be the signal that it's just about ready to flip. Put your spatula under there and pick that up. And flip that fritter over, there you go. You want that caramelization right down on the side. And we're gonna let that sit and bake again, just like a big old pancake or a fried egg. I want that cooked fully through when I come back. All right, the fritter is ready to come off and I just drop it right onto a paper towel so that that drains. You can set it on a plate in the same skillet that we had the corn. We're gonna now sear our scallops. Nice and hot, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil back to that skillet. Again, with a party for one, we don't want to clean up a whole lot of dishes. One of the keys to scallops is making sure that they're perfectly dry, which these are. So it's really good to take a clean dish towel, nice and clean, and make sure that there's no extra liquid, no water in the scallop, because that's going to explode once it hits the olive oil. All right, with your hands very carefully, just to turn, and there they go. Nice hot skillet. Three and I promise you that sea salt. Just sprinkle on top. Don't touch the scallops. They need to sit there until they're perfectly brown. We're gonna turn them once and then we're gonna pop them into the oven. They're gonna be perfect. I'll be right back with the rest of our party for one. If these bad boys are ready here, a little bit more, I think. We'll just let that sit and sear. We're gonna caramelize the bottom of that. We want just a little bit of brownness, some denseness, some color on the bottom of those scallops. And then once we flip them, that's it. You don't wanna overcook a scallop, otherwise it's gonna just feel like a rubber band that you're into. Okay, that's what we're after. You see that? Perfectly caramelized. Flip it over, let's get our other one. Oh, that's all it took. That is beautiful, and this guy should be ready. Okay, our scallops are finished. We turn the heat off. I just set them to warm in the oven. They'll stay warm all on their own and continue cooking. Let's drain our pasta and just pull this forward. We'll kill our fire on that. Okay, okay, that looks great. Just how pasta should look, little al dente. And I've got one of these great inserts. If you don't have one, go ahead and find one at any homeware store. I'm gonna just pick this up and drain my pasta right now. So a liaison is we're gonna pour out all but about two tablespoons of our pasta water. Don't let anything go to waste. That's about enough. And we're going to add our pasta back in and right back to the stove. The French word liaison means to carry like two letters or sounds together and it's also a French cooking technique. It's so simple. All you're gonna do is mix the pot pasta water with a little bit of soft butter. And you want to turn your heat on low this time because you've gotta get that fat into the bottom of the pan otherwise it's gonna stick and you don't wanna do that. I'm gonna grab a bunch of parsley and my kitchen shears and this is how I do it. I like really rough chops of parsley. You can use dry, but if you've got any fresh, it really is great. By the way, this is a super buffet dish. You can do an entire tray of just buttered parsley noodles. Let me get my towel. And right there is the liaison. It's the water and the butter coming together. Oh man, the 
fresh parsley. The aroma just comes through and that's it. That's the end of that recipe. We're going to set it aside. I'm just gonna peek on my scallops really quick here, see how they're doing. And you can see that they've all settled, but they're still warm. My fritter is rested. In fact, we can do a little trick here. Pull your plate out, turn your fritter, put your plate here, and go right on there, and then pull that off. And you're gonna have your corn fritter. Okay, when we come back, we're going to do the main course, which is a ribeye. My favorite steaks are a T-bone, a porterhouse, and a ribeye. Lately, I've really been enjoying the ribeye because it's wonderfully marbleized. In fact, I think I have one here I can talk to you about. It's got this beautiful edge on it, and I like my ribeye with the bone in. There's a lot of flavor that comes with that. I'm gonna show you how I season it up, how I sear it, and how it's the perfect envy for a party for one. Aye aye, the big ribeye. Look at this beautiful piece of meat. I had my butcher cut me an extra thick. Again, I said my favorite cuts are ribeyes, uh, T-bones, and porterhouses, but this big daddy cannot get cooked without this big daddy. And this is my granddaddy's cast iron skillet. And I remember when he passed away, we had to go through his things and I had the choice of a watch or the cast iron. And I said, I wanted the skillet. I love to barbecue and today it's really simple with grill tops and you know in-home grills as well as the outdoor barbecue. But my favorite way to do it just for me with a party for one is with a really hot cast iron skillet. I'm just gonna put this back on my burner and I'm gonna turn that on high. And I'm gonna show you how I season my steak. Take your wonderful fresh piece of steak with your immaculately clean hands. And I like three to four things. The first thing is crushed garlic, and I just buy it prepared. I don't uh, bother with uh, that up with a party for one. I do both sides. Notice that I'm still keeping a dry hand in place. And get the bone in the edges because all of that cooks, and that's where the flavor is. Then heavy, heavy amounts of celery. I like to pat that in. Then we're gonna do some cracked pepper. I like using red, white, and green peppers. And it's really important to pound all of those ingredients right into the steak. Let's flip it over. We're going to pepper that. I want to see black on that piece of red meat. I like to call it black and blue. In fact, uh, there are several places in the world that when you order a steak, it'd be, it can be a point. If it's French, it can be rare, but black and blue really just means black on the outside and blue on the inside. Olive oil, both sides. We already have some oil in the pan, but once this hits that hot sear, all the fats are gonna come out. It's this easy, watch this. Granddaddy, here is a piece of love into that pan. So super high heat, look at that. Right when I see it browning around the edge of the fat, that's when I pick it up and turn it over. Now we're gonna finish this in the oven, and you may wonder why I'm recommending that, but in fact, in the best steakhouses, what they do is they grill it on the stove top or they pan sear it, and they finish everything in the oven. This way you really get to control the doneness, and what I'm looking for, I personally like a rare steak. And the secret to that, I've taught you this before, is to just grab your thumb, and right here in the middle, if you push right here, that's rare. If you push right there, that's medium rare. And if you grab it right there, that's done. That's how you tell the doneness. So as I push that, I know that this is gonna take probably just about four minutes at a 400, 450 degree oven. I'm gonna pop it into the oven. Oh, there are my scallops on the way to the board. Make sure you have one of these heat protective handles on there. These look perfect. Same rule for doneness that I just taught you on the meat works actually for fish. So let me show you how to plate this up. You're just gonna grab the fritter, your tongs, and slide that on there. Mm, I'm having memories of that great cab driver, whatever your name was. Thank you so much for taking me to the Viceroy New York. And then let's just grab each one of these and make a lovely little tower. And right in this pan, get that little guy on top. There we go, perfect. Right in this pan, I'm just gonna put a splash of sherry vinegar. And literally, with my tongs, 
I'm gonna use the pan sauces. You see that? So easy. Remember what our base was? We had olive oil and salt. And I'm gonna drizzle that right there. And then to top it off right at the very end. We need some color. I love a red pepper sauce. Just going over the top. A little bit of fire, top it with just a little bit of parsley. Even for a party for one, you want it to look great. And there is my corn fritter scallop tower. All the great flavors of the South with some spice. I absolutely love that. I can hear that steak. Let me see how it's coming out. Oh. I can predict that this is gonna be at the exact doneness I'm looking for, and it is. Watch that bounce, can you see that? That is a rare steak. It's gonna be perfectly cooked on the outside. And one of the main secrets that you have to remember, granddaddy did not fail me again, is to let that meat rest. And I like to just let it sit right on my block. I'm gonna take my skillet back to the stove, and this is where my pan sauce comes in. I like a little sauce on my steak. Gonna use another hunk of butter. A little bit more olive oil just to give me some consistency. All the flavor, those brown bits at the bottom is exactly what we're looking for. And then with a wooden spoon, which I like to deglaze with, we are gonna deglaze this pan nice and hot with some beautiful white wine. There we go. Stand back, oh, these flavors are perfect. I'm gonna let that sit for probably about one minute. Fresh cracked pepper. Now we're, we gained all the herbs and spices that were on the steak when it went in. I personally like a lot of pepper. In fact, I love a steak Diane and even a pepper steak. Right when it begins to froth on the top, that's usually when I know it's done. You wanna taste this. I, I do this all the time, but be careful with the top. Mm, that's great, we have the butter, we have the garlic in there and the pepper. Let's move this off to the side because we're just gonna to top our steak with it, and I'm gonna show you how I do my party for one spinach. High heat in a skillet, I already have about a um, tablespoon and a half of butter. This is so easy, and today with these great uh, prepackaged produce, I personally eat an entire bag of spinach myself. Now it seems like it's a lot, but it really does shrink down to just about nothing. I like a little bit of butter to open that whole thing up. You want a big, deep pan because it starts out big, but when you see this come off, you'll see that there's very, very little left. And what I do is just drizzle olive oil, a dash of salt, nothing more than just a quick dash. There we go. And a tablespoon of water. We're gonna check that in about one minute. The steak should be rested. Turn it on high. And when we come back, I'm going to plate up my favorite party for one. Well, that is how quick the spinach takes. Literally, literally about one minute. There's our beautiful butter sauce. Oh, it smells so good. Popeye is going to make it big and strong. Boy, I wish my mom knew how to make spinach like this when I was a kid. But fresh produce is so good and so important in our diet. Healthy, bright green. I love to see all the colors come together. Here's my scallop corn fritter, my tower of scallops, which I, I'm crazy for. You've heard me say it over and over. And I know this sounds nuts, but when it's your party for one, you can do whatever you want. This chopping block was given to me by my dad when I graduated high school. In my family, you weren't allowed to leave the house without your own chopping block. And it's got these two handles underneath it. Sometimes I just eat on it. So I kind of do the Fred Flintstone thing. I just put my big ribeye right on there and I actually use my grandparents' carving set. I wanna just cut into that before I sauce it and show that to you. That is a perfect medium. Look at that in the middle, nice and rare on the inside. Let's see if granddaddy's skillet served me well. And I sauce all over that. Oh, this is a party for one. I'm gonna put my utensils in there. And I'm gonna go to my favorite chair at the table. I poured myself this great Spanish Grenache. I found it locally and it's really well priced. It's a big red and that's just what I want with my favorite meal, a great beautiful ribeye steak. I'm gonna cut into that. I don't quite know what to start with first, but I think the steak is calling my name right now. Eating with uh, my grandparents' utensils. I know it's a little, like I said, Fred Flintstone, but 
Mm. That steak is perfectly, perfectly seasoned. That's great. Yeah, that's perfect with the steak. I can't decide what I want first, but I'm just gonna dig right into the, um, the scallop. Mm. That's beautiful. And let's get that corn fritter. Oh, this is definitely one of my favorite, favorite meals. All that earthiness of the corn is coming through. Mm. What a great combination. I've gotta have a second bite of that. I love the crispy edges. When you're frying this in the skillet, make sure those edges get really crispy. You get some texture in there. Mm, that's good. That is really good. Also, I always have a glass of um, sparkling water with, with my favorite dinner. Here comes my liaison, just my buttered parsley noodles. Good. Really good. So I told you nothing was better than a party for one, and today's menu is a great example. And I know you do it, I know you do it. So go online to entertainingpeople.com, blog, send me an email, and tell me about all the great crazy parties that you've had. Just you, tell the truth, tell on yourself, and I'm going right back to my dinner. I'll see you next time when I'm entertaining the world one table at a time.